Uh, let's dig into the updates on the vaccine front a little bit more, though. Of course, Pfizer and BioNTech are the ones uh, first to uh, apply for the uh, emergency use authorization there, but Moderna not far behind after we got those results, both about at that 95% effective rate, well above the 50% threshold the FDA had established earlier. So let's bring on a doctor who is part of that Moderna uh, clinical trial there and Dr. Reynold uh, Panettieri, professor of medicine at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School. Uh, and doctor, appreciate you coming on to chat here today. I mean, we were discussing before the show uh, just the speed in which we got here. I mean, talk to me as a doctor who was part of the research going into this, how surprised you are at the pace that we see ourselves approaching uh, the final chapter. Yeah, this is uh, this is truly a, a remarkable, remarkable and stunning turn of events. The fact is that we didn't even have the genomic information about the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, it was about nine, 10 months ago that we finally cloned and had the genetic code. And to go from that instance to deployment of a vaccine within 11 months is, is warp speed doesn't define the science behind it, uh, the efficacy, and the speed with which uh, everything's occurring. It's phenomenal. Uh, I've heard you talk about sort of the, the key differences between uh, what we have seen from Moderna as well as Pfizer, saying that on the one hand, Moderna's development is more significant because it does uh, look across the full data set. And unlike Pfizer, it doesn't require uh, these special freezers. Um, how are you looking at these two developments right now? And more importantly, how do, how do you think the public should be looking at it in terms of how things are likely to be distributed when it does, in fact, come to market? So let's be clear, the efficacy signal that we see with Moderna and Pfizer are pretty comparable, pretty amazing too. As it was mentioned earlier, this is an mRNA platform, a platform that uh, effectively has not been uh, leveraged uh, to this extent. So the fact that two companies with two molecules uh, have very similar, very similar efficacy is quite encouraging, frankly. Coming back to Okay, what happens now? Well, the logistics is really mind boggling because we're talking about hundreds of millions of people, if you look globally, uh, billions to be vaccinated. Uh, you are correct that the Moderna approach doesn't require some of the sophisticated freezing, um, the minus 96 Fahrenheit that's necessary for uh, the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, some of these logistics could be solved by regional freezer farms that could then uh, serve as the springboard to send the uh, the vaccines out. But it is one hurdle, right? It, it makes it a little more difficult than using the Moderna product, which could be put into any freezer, your home freezer. But remember, the Pfizer freezer is about five times colder than anything that you would have in your home. Doctor, looking at it from the standpoint of administration, not only is distribution a problem, but they are both two-dose vaccines. And of course, we know the adherence and compliance of that is also going to be a concern. As it stands right now, what are your thoughts on how that can be addressed and whether or not we will see uh, people sort of skip that second dose? Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, the mRNA vaccines require two doses, an initial priming dose and then a booster. Uh, and you have to have the two. You have to have the two to have the efficacy. So it is, uh, it is another logistics challenge. Uh, I think people realize the severity and the consequences of a COVID-19 infection. So hopefully uh, that will drive an improved adherence, but there's no guarantees. The other more traditional viral vector vaccines, the, the ones being developed now by, by Jensen or by Merck or by AstraZeneca, that's, that's more traditional and uh, certainly the Jensen one's a single dose. But moving forward, I think we have to recognize that adherence can be a stumbling block. There has to be an understanding uh, by individuals that you must get that second dose. It's, an, it's, again, another logis logistics uh, challenge. Yeah, and we've already seen how hard it's been to even get Americans to wear masks up until this point as well. But, Doctor, when we talk about uh, the timeline here, too, we were just discussing how quick we've moved. But the question now becomes uh, how quickly the FDA is going to want to approve this. In your mind, uh, having seen this all play out, 
Pfizer says uh, in their release here that they're going to be able to get the vaccine to high-risk populations by the middle to end of December. Uh, what does the timeline now look like to you? Yeah, so uh, just to step back and get a little more granular here, there takes two things that the FDA is looking at, right? They're looking at efficacy and safety. So both of those have to align to get the EUA. Now, both companies have done a phenomenal job, actually, in the quality of the studies that have been performed. We were directly involved in the Moderna trial. Uh, so very well done studies. I think the, uh, the, the data is there, and I think it'll move swiftly uh, through, uh, uh, through the FDA. Now, getting to your other point, okay, and if you have an approved vaccine, where do we go with that? Well, as mentioned, it's going to be frontline workers, healthcare workers predominantly, uh, potentially police fire fighters as well, as well as EMTs. These are the individuals who get the most exposure. So that's going to be critical. That's going to be critical to get those doses to the patients. The original prediction was that we were going to be nowhere near this year having the opportunity to vaccinate. I think truthfully that we will be vaccinating towards the second week in December. Um, already the companies are formulating the doses necessary to get this done. Uh, how the distribution of the doses will be is likely going to be a state-driven initiative with federal support. Um, and hopefully, as alluded, that the general populace will be injected probably the, the beginning of the second quarter or towards the end of the first quarter of 2021. But again, this is a massive effort, a massive effort to vaccinate an entire country, not only an entire world. Yeah, and as we've all been watching this play out, it's been amazing to see the progress and the speed at which it's been achieved, but uh, obviously not completely done yet. But Dr. Reynold Panettiere, a professor of medicine at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, appreciate you joining us to discuss all that. Thank you.